Hi everyone, thank you for having me today. So let me start. What can contemporary photography say about the Middle Ages? What kind of medieval survives in the history of photograph in London? These questions underline my current project, Capturing Medieval London, Framing and Perspective. This project examines and uncovers the remaining material fragments of medieval London by engaging with the city through the viewing perspective of the photographer. Capturing Medieval London asks how the medieval city has been and continues to be framed and viewed, but it also examines a range of photographic documentation associated with key medieval sites. Susan Sontag, in her seminal text on photography, writes that the act of photography transforms the present into the past and the past into pastness. Alongside this, Sontag also suggests that it is photography and the camera which is commonly regarded as an instrument for knowing things. When capturing an image of a medieval site, we frame and transform that past into the, that present into the past as we reflect on the multi-temporal uh, multi-temporality of the remains. The project then argues that the photograph, as an archival document, as an output of a practice, as a concept, can illuminate the way medieval place reveals its layers its impressions, not only through its contemporary framing for audiences or viewers, but precisely through its multi-temporality. Very briefly today, I'm going to give an overview of my project, then move on to one of my case studies, Chaucer's Monument, which resides in Poets Corner in Westminster Abbey. I will then finish with a brief selection of my related engagement, inclusion and participation. In capturing medieval London, I'm focusing on a number of key medieval sites as case studies. These include Westminster Abbey, the Georgian and the Royal Oak, Old Gate, St Paul's Cathedral and the Savoy. This is less a study of how such historical sites are survivals, and more an examination of how these places interact with the temporally stratified city that consists, and the consistent onlookers that surround them. Medieval sites are famed for audiences in the present, but they are also impress themselves on us from beneath or alongside other buildings, Sometimes they materialise as we look anew, and other times certain medieval sites, like Oldgate for example, are invisible, existing as presences that emerge as we walk around where they were once likely to have been. This materialisation gives us a way to question how we view these medieval sites, the processes of photographic development and of emerging camera technologies, including stereographs and pigment printing, might also offer, offer us comparative critical concepts and materials for speaking to the way medieval places are layered with and through time. Chaucer's tomb. The monument was erected in 1556 at the bequest of Nicholas Bingham. It sits in the south transept of Westminster Abbey, an area known as Poet's Corner. It has been captured by a camera since the inception of technology. The images you see now were taken, on, were taken last year with my iPhone and exists solely in the cloud. In my phone, Chaucer's remains are digital. In their presentation to you today, I'm actively contributing to the perpetuation of this site. For as Carolyn Dinshaw states, each present now is stretched out and spanned by a past now and a future now. The perpetual medieval is, a ca is captured through the photographing of medieval remains such as Chaucer's tomb, a continually aging monument of the past. Through my archival research in both London and the US, I have discovered that Chaucer's tomb exists in various forms of photographic material remains. What I've found is an inventory that at once preserves and disrupts the accepted histories of this tomb. We have a media of remains. There are multiple technologies at play in the preceding images, with a timeline ranging from 1860 to the present day. On this slide here, you can see three of the earliest images of Chaucer's tomb. One from 1896, maybe I should. <laughs> One from 1896 by A.W. Ellison, which is a reproduction print that has been mounted. One 1896 printed book image of a glass lantern slide by S. B. E. Bolas. And the last, the 1928 stereograph by Keystone View and Underwood, all of which were printed in by and for the US market. Here you can see a glass plate lantern side from the Dabs collection of the London and Middlesex Archaeological Society from 1910. And from Kirsten's, Anthony Kirsten's archive held in the Courtauld, a print from a negative from 1939. 
And the final image is this spotlight high drama image from Jim Dyson of Getty Images from his published book, Dead Famous London in 2012. Photographs as material objects exist in their own time and in their own space, documenting multiple histories beyond that of the image that is being captured, interweaving narratives of photographer, image, object, camera. This means that there are also remains of another kind, the remains of past perception of the Middle Ages. In this context, Chaucer's tomb becomes a placeholder for the medieval, where reading the images of the tomb documents the changing perceptions of the Middle Ages as recorded in photography. This, the tomb is a placeholder for recording time and for showcasing technologies. For example, the images from the US were likely captured for a tourist and for education purposes, to bring London into the American home. Curtin's image, captured in the outbreak of World War II, just before the Blitz, allows us to peer at a time just before the original stained glass window above the tomb was destroyed. Dyson's Dead Famous London was published during a time when London was humming in the Globe Olympics, capitalising on dead plus famous plus London, an active attempt to capture London's history in the moments before it recapitulated. So what can contemporary photographic practice reveal about the ways the medieval past survives in the modern city? Might it allow us to capture the way the Middle Ages exists, both a visible and invisible presence through London? And might photographic histories reveal more recent histories of viewing and documenting the Middle Ages? These questions were the basis for my walking trail that sought to uncover and rediscover the medieval remains of London. The trail was not a history walk per se, nor was, nor was it a local tour. Instead, it was a collaborative conversation about layered time and one that was carried out on the move. It asked participants ranging from photographers and medievalists to artists and those with keen interest in London history to think with perspective and offer perspective by using their cameras to document the invisible remains of maybe London. And here is a short film. Photo trail at uh, Catherine Medieval London. Um, it's a conversation about a layered time. It's about thinking together with different perspectives on perspective. So, what point or what perspective are we perceiving these sites that we travel on today? And how are we accessing the past? What do we lose? What, but what can we capture? What do we miss in taking pictures? And can we capture something that was not previously there? I would invite you to think critically, to think aesthetically, and to, to think creatively about your practice and about the London landmarks that we explore today. At each site, I'll provide a tiny bit of history just to set the scene, um, and to, again, with some questions, but I really want you to think with your camera. So, with that in mind, welcome to Seth Giles' The Crystal Game. Repair. Okay. What you can see here, and what you'll be able to touch, if you couldn't touch before, is actually the old London view. You've got the Roman bridges. You've got the Roman sun. What's also interesting is that underneath the seal of London, which is what you've got there, which was created in 1381, one of the most powerful times in the Middle Ages.
divided power. This theme for this one is think about assemblage, think about collage, kind of how history is housed, how do we capture it. Try and go down to the crypts, um, capture something that has summed up your experience on the entire frame. Uh, this trail resulted in an online exhibition, of which I will share in a moment, where I asked participants to send four or five images that encapsulated their response to the questions asked throughout the walk. Questions such as, how can we use the camera and use modern technology to position ourselves as spectators in the Middle Ages? How do we capture fragments and reveal new narratives of these sites? As you can see, many participants captured the temporal layers of London's history by creating collages of the medieval a medieval that is either hidden or emerging out of much more contemporary architecture. What emerges in this new archive of photographs is an overlaying of the medieval on the modern, but also a medieval is always asking us to look at it from different perspectives and to think with it by being in proximity to its surviving material. This was collaborative work. Some participants captured the in-between, the pathways between each stop, emphasising movement between the past and the present and across the invisible lines of the old London wall, for example or the invisible time flow of the friends. <laughs> Ask me later, you can see a link to the <laughs> website, so just so I'm first up, I don't want to take it. So what has photography got to do with the Middle Ages? As Sarah Sali states, there is an infinite number of medieval Londons, their frames of visibility continually shifting. The camera, of course, offers one way of framing and shifting visibility. While photography, its process, its own history, and its byproducts provides methods for a creative, critical engagement with medieval places. To the photographic remains of Chaucer's tomb, through time, to a collaborative piece of photography, we're photographing key medieval sites. This fellowship has moved me from individual research to collaborative practice and back again. The interests of the project going forward lie in the implications and ramifications of combining studies of photography of medieval sites with contemporary practice. As the work itself moves throughout the city, the past and the present collide in the digital space too. And so I'll leave you with this question. If photography is the act of mediating between the past and the present, what kind of medieval image can we make without camera?